Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make uh, your enemy sprite, or any kind of sprite for that matter, uh, walk around in a predetermined path that you set yourself. So you'll sort of patrol the path, if you will. The first step is to go into your tile map and decide where you want him to travel. So I'm going to use these just to mark out where I want him to change directions. So I want him to walk across the top here, change direction, go down, change direction, go across, change direction, and then back up to where you started. So we'll just use these as markers for now. We'll take them off at the end, uh, but for now they're just markers to show where and when we want them to turn. The next step is to go down into the extensions tab and up the top. I'll put this in the description so you can copy paste it into your games and it's all easier. But it's J Wonder but with W. Uh, J Wonder but with a U instead of an O. L and then forward slash arcade dash tile map dash A dash star. So it'll look like that. Press enter and click that to install it. And now if you go into scene, it will have added a lot of these path following blocks. So these are what we'll use to get our sprite, our enemy sprite, moving around. So if we drag out the first two blocks here, so the path from and to, and this one here, the sprite follow path. Snap them together with the path block going in where it says item. And I'll put that into where you create your enemy. I've made another function called path enemy because if we put it in with the same enemy as your other kinds of enemies who just stand still or just follow you normally, then you're going to have a bit of trouble because they're all going to try to follow the same path as Jim here, which won't quite work. So we'll change my sprite here to Jim. And next we're going to have to find the coordinates of where Jim starts and where we want him to end his first segment of the path. So if we go into our tile map, and if you pay attention down here beside the number 16, when I hover over a tile, it will give me the grid coordinates of that tile. For example, if I hover over where Jim starts, it will say 8, then comma 1, and that's what we put into our code. So 8, 1. So if I put 8, 1 into the first box where he's starting, so path from here, that's where he starts. And then in the two section, this is where we want them to finish. Now, uh, finish the first segment. So I want that to be the first turning point here. So I want them to walk across here, stop here, and then go down. So the location of that is 1, 1. So I'll add that into my code. There we are. So now he should stop on this little blue tile. Next, go into variables, and we'll make a variable. I'll call it waypoint, and this is just going to tell us where, uh, well, what part of the path Jim is on at the moment. So at the moment, he's at the first waypoint. So I'll set waypoint to one. Next, if we go into scene again, and scroll down, Grab this one right from the bottom on Sprite of Kind Player Completes Path. And this is how we're going to tell Jim, you know, to continue his path. So if he goes from here to here, we want to tell him to continue by going downwards. So this is what this block's going to do. So if we go into the logic and grab out an if else block here, Then go into logic again and grab out one of these equals blocks and snap it in where it says true. And into variables and we'll drag out our waypoint variable here. 
and set that to one. So what it's saying is when, oh, change player here to whatever sprite kind of sprite your uh, enemy is. So mine's sprite kind enemy. So on when an enemy, so in this case Jim, completes his path, uh, we tell him to do what's in here. So if he's at the first waypoint, we want him to move to the second waypoint down here. So I'll copy these two out of here. One, two. So we want, if he's at the first waypoint, we want Jim to follow path from, and then we drag in location into the first part. So locations just means where he is right now. So we say, if Jim completes his path, he's on waypoint one, we want him to go from where he is now to location two, to waypoint two. So if we go into our tile map, hover over waypoint two, which is this one for me, so he's going one, two, and we can see the coordinates in the bottom corner down here, it says one, six. So that's what we'll put in to here, one, and six. And then we set waypoint to two to say that Jim is on waypoint two now. Next, click on the plus to add a new else if bit here. Now we can just copy paste it all in again. So copy paste in this bit. And we'll set waypoint to two. And then we can copy paste in these parts as well. So it's saying if Jim is on the second waypoint, we'll get him to follow a path from where he is right now to waypoint three down here. So if we go into our tile map and hover over it, it is eight, six down in this bottom corner again. There we are. So we'll add that to our code. So now it says when Jim completes his path, if he's at waypoint one, he'll go to waypoint two. If he's at waypoint two, He'll go to waypoint three. So we'll set waypoint to three here. Yeah. Now we have to repeat the same process for each point. So in total we have one, two, three, four points. So I'll add a new one in. And this will send him to waypoint. So, if waypoint equals 3, then Jim will follow a path from where he is right now to waypoint. So he goes across to waypoint 3, and we want him to go from where he is right now to waypoint 4, which is where he started. So once again, into the tile map, hover over it, and it was H1. So we change this to 8, 1, and now he should do a full square, if we watch up here. Yep. There we are. And the last thing we need to do is just to send him off on another loop around the square. So if we have another else if here, drag and copy and paste this all in again. So if waypoint is four, so if he's on the last one, then we want to send him from where he is right now back to waypoint one. So in this case, it was one, one. So we can double check it. If we hover over it, down in the bottom left, it says one, one. There we are. So one, one in here. And the last step is to set the waypoint back to 1. So now if we watch Jim go around, he should turn whenever he reaches the end of his path. So there we are. So now we can go into our tile map and we can get rid of these little placeholders here. Keep the pink one because that's what places Jim down originally. I reload this. 
there we are and this have a look there's Jim and he walks around his path so hopefully that's helpful and you could add it to your games I would say it's a bit more advanced than some of the other coding we've done but I think it'd be quite useful <laughs>